Hello everyone, I am Tacit and today I'm going to be going over the weekly objectives for the Damon week. So let's get into that. For one, it's blinking right now. We actually got a couple that we just end up doing. But this week we have a pretty unique one, something that they haven't really done for the event gems. And we have to summon daemons in order to get event gems. Every single daemon you summon counts as one additional uh, event gem. And of course, because that's relatively hard to do, it does have a much, much lower cost than many other weeks, with the main reward only going to 60. Unfortunately, m much of the gems are towards the higher end, but I would say just go to 60. Herald of Chaos actually is a pretty good epic, unlike some of the ones that have been gone in the past. Uh, he has leadership and he has death touch on his last trait relatively good troop to use early on normally because you can't get his other two traits so you'll just get the leadership and have him with a very high boost ratio of two times that boost based on two different things based on how many blues it destroys which is also good with things such as valkyrie so let me go show some of the basics for this and the team that i have been uh using to uh grind this out so let's go over to troops there's two things we have, here are all of the troops that can summon. This isn't an actual team. These are just troops that can summon daemons. We have to choose from Void Portal, which requires at least 12 souls or more before it can summon. Sacrificial Priest, which is just a 30% chance. Uh, Krog the Dread, which requires 13 or more purple. And then there are two that have a 100% chance of always doing it without any requirement. That is the Demo Demonicon. Uh, you get this from 250 wins on the Sorcerer quest. Also, um, setting your sorcerer cl class to a daemon will give 25% to your hero this week. Keep that in mind when building teams. And Abnesia, uh, which is a mythic, but she also does it at 100%. As far as things that can do it via traits, the easiest one you can do is Warlock. Uh, literally anything with demonic pack you can do, but Warlock is the easiest because you t uh, most players tend to have a lot of uh, brown and blue gems if they haven't already spent it, mainly because that's the first kingdom you battle in when you first start out on the game, and because a lot of people when you do PvP earlier on in the game are using the Broken Spire Kingdom because they haven't bothered changing their home kingdom yet. So you tend to get a lot of brown blue trade stones, which makes Warlock the absolute easiest thing to get a demonic pack on. The other th options that you have is Inferno King, which has a 25% chance to revive himself, and a Sybaris, which has, uh, whenever you kill an enemy, it'll summon a warg, and that warg is a daemon, so it counts for an event gem. So let's now go into the team I've been using. I haven't been doing it in PvP or anything. I was trying to find some teams for it. It just seems way too slow. Um, but here... Oh, I also... Something else funny that I tried doing. I tried setting my team to four Inferno Kings and tried fighting my own... Um, myself and was hoping that that would give event gems because I set it to a Desdemona that could just tear through them like nothing. Uh, unfortunately, that does not work. Uh, that would actually be the quickest method possible if that did work. But unfortunately, that does not work. So instead... We are going to be trying this team right here. Sacrificial Priest, Daemonicon, Green Slime, and basically anything with a magic link. I mainly have the Empowered so we can get a poke. You can also set something here that has a demonic pack if you really want to. Either of the two uh, would work. But the general premise of what we're going to do here is get up Sacrifice as quick as possible, then go into the Summon. Uh, pretty much every single time on Sacrifice, we will be aiming on green. Uh, unless there's a lot of blue on the board, in which case we will just aim at blue. But for the most part, we will want to aim at green, because our green slime does need those greens. Uh, so like right here would be an instance where uh, Demonic Pack would actually be better. Uh, I'm going to throw it on green, just because you probably should for most of the first ones. Just should try getting your green slime with a little bit of alignment. So right here, you can just do this and go right into a solid extra turn. Of course, after this, you'll then want to go to blue because there's basically no green on the board. You could still do green if you want, but your chances of getting an extra turn are greatly uh, diminished. And you kind of just keep repeating this until it either misses, you kill the entire enemy team, or you kill your entire own team, uh, whichever one happens first. And right here, of course, blue, like I said, second cast is... For, normally, the order is green, blue, and then just keep spamming green is normally the order um, that I found to be the best. But, of course, whichever one has more, you can just do it on... Or simply just always do it on um, green if you want to uh, optimize your extra turns on your green slime. Because, like, right now, since we did it on blue, there's a lot lower chance that we'll get an extra turn right here. Uh, but we did it earlier to try to get an extra turn earlier, which we end up getting. So it's kind of just a trade-off if you want it now or later. 
If you want it now, you just go on whichever one of green or blue is more populated. If you want it later, then you just always aim at green, or else you'll get boards like this, which you'll pretty much just not have any green on. But of course, we'll go for blue, because we have a higher chance of getting extra turn. We still miss it, but uh, oh well. We do, of course, kill out our green slime here. Uh, unfortunately, we do not have the mana at this point, so this will probably be a moment where I'll just want to kill myself out. You do have to either win or lose in order to claim all of the event gems. Do keep that in mind. So you have to pick one or the other, or else you won't be able to get the event gems. If we click retreat right now, uh, we will not get any of the event gems that we have accumulated. Oop, didn't take the uh, yellow there. But all we have to do now is just take a skull, and I believe we summon two troops, and then you kind of just keep defeating that. If you get a good enough loop, I got as many as five in an earlier battle, and it still went at a pretty decent pace. Of course, you'll want to keep the green slime um, as big as possible, uh, or as live as long as possible. The only problem is once you start missing like this, it's normally just quicker to end out the match than it is to really uh, try messing around with it. And there we go for the kill, and I believe that's two event gems, three or two. Oh no, only one. Gosh. Well, then let's try that again. You definitely want to go to at least two. Uh, one would be a little bit too few. Uh, that is definitely not enough. You could also try this in PvP if you want. Uh, it would definitely help to make you lose quicker. But once you lose sacrifice, this uh, kind of breaks the whole synergy of the team. So you definitely do not want to uh, lose your sacrifice. So we do want to give him skulls and stuff. Um, won't really matter. That means he's not going to be taking any colors. And of course, there are some colors on the board that we will be needing for us to actually be able to use to fill up all of our troops here. So he'll get the poke off. Uh, a little bit less on the mana from the start. Uh, we could just use this on a Finesse just kind of to poke them down. And kind of just waste our turn with that because there's no mana that we can actually take. Let him try to line it like that and then hopefully get the green. Okay. Well, there goes the shuffle. Saw that coming. That's why I ended up doing the Finesse. Uh, using an empowered troop like that, Crude Club is normally used in the... Um, beginning for that method but um using an ability to skip your turn is sometimes good if you don't want to get uh hit with the uh shuffle or if you know the shuffle's coming uh, unfortunately we did end up giving it to him but you can use it for that purpose uh okay so we'll start with the sacrificing now we'll do this on our green uh this time let's actually try with the uh other strategy and just spam out green every single time um because that made our green slime not really able to get mana earlier um so we're gonna do the demonicon and then just keep doing it on green and nothing else other than green and let's see if that goes a little bit better in our favor this time okay so there we go again uh, of course we will want to get that mana up before we go and sacrifice it don't accidentally sacrifice it too early that we kind of did in the beginning of that first battle but let's not do that again get another one of those event gems uh, something else that's pretty good about this is you actually summon a daemon that has the ability of demonic pack that would uh, just get you two in one. Uh, like right here, I'm somewhat tempted to go blue, but we'll just keep spamming out to green. Uh, even though we'll miss our turn here, it will give us an, uh, a better chance of our green slime having a better ability later. The only problem is once we lose that loop like we just did, it starts going a little bit slower. Uh, this is probably the most annoying event gem week thus far. Uh, I've tried using it with Kabaris and stuff like that, trying to kill it out with Black Beast and other things. Um... I just haven't found anything that could really do it exceptionally well. I haven't tried doing like a per hour thing, but I believe this only gives, um, most of the teams I've been trying only give about 20 event gems per hour. And what was the highest one? Like 200 that we needed? It takes a long, long time. I'm probably not going any further than the 60 this week if I even go uh, that far. And right here, we'll just have to get our mana up, get our Demonicon up at least one more time. And then we can sacrifice whatever that out, hopefully get the loop going again and kind of go from there. Because I do want to not uh, destroy the green slime if we can. Uh, one other thing you could do is uh, put sacrifice in third slot. Uh, though that does limit how far you can actually go with this team. Um, because uh, if you keep the sacrifice, you can just keep taking purple and get your hero up instead. But if you end up taking out your sacrifice, you won't be able to end the battle as easily. And um, then you might be here like literally forever to claim your event gems because you just can't end the battle unless you do it through skulls. But of course that can take a little while too if the board is not playing nice like right now. Uh, but we'll just go for brown. He'll easily just take one of those. He'll probably get the extra turn off that. As long as he can give us like one little poke of mana, that'd be great. So nope, we don't get it off the top right there. 
He'll remove some of those gems, and then we'll just go and take something else off the board. So he'll take the skull, he'll get the green. As long as he doesn't get a green there, we should be fine. And come on, purple, no purple. Okay, so we'll just give him skulls. He'll give us, still not give us purple alignment. Gosh, we can't take that for purple. Uh, we can't sacrifice for purple. We can't take our mana. We'll just take that for now. Hopefully he won't go for purple. He likely will though. And yeah, the AI will just take our purple every single time because it knows it's our priority. And the AI definitely loves to take whatever you need. Uh, so we'll just take the rain there. If nothing else, we can start getting the green slime. And he finally gives us purple. Gosh. So we'll go for the purple. Get our other summon. We have like a billion magic on this thing because we're using a sorcerer. Unfortunately, that doesn't really matter for anything. He'll get a poke there. It won't be enough to kill though. Even if he takes another skull. Though our sacrifice is about to die soon. And at that point, we will have to likely go for the skulls to uh, kill him out. But right here, again, keep spamming the greens. Um, that is kind of why I like going for the blues first because, or the blue second, I mean, green first, blue second, then spam green. Because missing that turn makes this go a lot slower. But if you get the right synergy, if you get it to actually um, hit hit it nicely, it will go a lot quicker. Uh, so we'll just do that on the purple. Get a random skull. Good. That'll make it so we can end it a little bit quicker as well when it comes around. And perfect. We'll just take a purple and he'll take a skull we'll use the monocon and then we just need to find one more skull and we can claim the match from there so we get our summon hey hey another thing that can summon another one well we probably won't get a summon off on her uh is there even any mana that we could take for her it doesn't look like it so we'll just take a random thing but we'll just end it with a skull we already claimed enough event gems for now that uh don't really need to be poking around just throw that down hopefully get an extra turn there we go, perfect. Oh, well, I guess we do get it. So let's use our Amnesia, get that rolling. Get another Amnesia. Unfortunately, we don't have any additional slots that we can destroy. So it won't actually give us a summon. I was trying Amnesia builds too. The main problem I found with Amnesia builds is I wasn't getting enough things to actually sacrifice with. Um, because every single thing that has sacrifice, um, she's blocking their mana. So it doesn't exactly work uh, that well. I was trying a couple of them. They didn't really seem to go um, particularly quick. Uh, then again, nor does this. But I think we just got a four or five event gems. Five, yeah. So that is about the quickest I have found. I know there are a lot of builds rolling around right now for what could possibly work. It is definitely a lot different than how you normally build teams. I highly advise not doing specific PvP teams for it as uh, that it will just make it take even longer than uh, what you would normally be doing. Um, but if you did want to use any of those kind of troops, of course, we did show all of them earlier. Those are what you have as choices. Either um, things like fully traded Inferno King, fully traded for bearers, fully traded Warlock, which is the easiest of them to get, or anything with Demonic Pack. But everything with Demonic Packs, uh, Warlock's the easiest of them, or any of the summons. I would advise leaning towards either a uh, Demonicon, Void Portal, uh, sacrificial priest or um, uh, sacrifice if you need sacrificing of destroying them out, which you likely will be needing, or uh, just go with the Abnesia if you happen to uh, have her. But anyways, let's go now to the plus five glory team. Um, that, of course, is whenever you use a team with the Incubus, we will be getting a plus five glory this week. If we go over to events, that's what that's from. And, of course, we have the 25, or why it's Damien week, is we have that 25% to all Damien's as well as that 25% to all Blighted Lands, leading to a lot of Blighted Lands troops that have a pretty large bonus this week. 50% on almost all of them, except Twisted Hero and Ven Barrack, both of which are normally pretty weak anyways. Uh, though I would advise not using um, Creeper and Hellhound as well. They are both uh, extremely weak troops that you really have no need for using. Oh, same as Quasit. Uh, actually, I think he's like one of the weakest comments in the entire game. Though with that random reduction, he might be a little bit better this week. If it, hits, if it randomly hits HP somehow. But let's go and do this team. Um, general premise is get Gor Gorgotha up and then just cast out the giant spider quickly. If you don't have a Gorgotha, I have been using it with Dust Devil. Uh, Dust Devil can help them some to align because it does move where the positioning is. And uh, with the double charm, unless they are uh, specifically adjacent to each other, it's not going to work. And sometimes you can use a Dust Devil to make that work. Uh, for example, if there was, uh, let's say, the first Inferno King 
and the uh, Rowan were both alive right now, and those were the only two troops in the, on the entire team. Uh, using a uh, Incubus on that would not kill, but if we then use a Dust Devil, that would bring the Inferno King to fourth and the Rowan to third slot. And then if we were to use the Double Charm, they would hit each other. Uh, what Charm basically does is whenever there are troops, um, it takes a target and it does their attack damage to both of the adjacent uh, allies. If there's nothing there, it will not hit. It has to be specifically adjacent. Like this Inferno King would hit that and that. If there was a hole there, it would just hit that because it doesn't go all the way over there. It just hits what's specifically adjacent to that troop. And uh, it's, it's attack damage by the fact that it takes the value. It's not actually attack damage in that it's reduced by stone or it's not gonna burn them by that. It's basically just like normal ability damage, except it takes their attack value for it. Okay, so we'll throw down a Creeping Death. A little bit annoying with the Triple Inferno King. Not quite sure why he's using Inferno King spam on his defense team. Um, that would make sense maybe on his invade team. That maybe his invade team got switched to his uh, defense team. I've been seeing that quite a bit lately too. Where I'll just have use a random team. And then that random team that I use will be set as my defense team. Even though I didn't actually change my defense team to that team. So he's going to get a little bit of skulls here. I'm not really too worried. We have a Gorgolfo fully traded. Uh, unless he gets a stun somehow, which he can't with his team. Uh, that's not really going to do much. He could do that uh, one or two more times. Uh, probably two more times, and that wouldn't even work. Uh, though after that Rowan cast, it would be only one more time. He is getting a pretty bit of a long turn here. He did get a little bit of alignment. We did have that tankiness to counter that out. And yeah, we we'll, should be able to survive one more of the scroll spams. I do want to mainly take his manas if we can. Uh, just kind of looking around for what we might be able to do with that. We'll just go for that. Uh, do want to try getting up our giant spider if we can. I'll probably throw down that succubus. Um, let's see. Well, we'll let him take the skull because he does basically nothing off the skulls. We'll get our double hit right there, doing 42 to literally his entire team. So it was basically just a full AoE hit of 42. These are just taking their attack values. And we get our death mark kill. Nice. We'll do this on the red, mainly to remove out his ability to get an extra turn. Or at least minimize it a little bit more. Uh, since he does all brown to red. We definitely want to stop that some if we can. Uh, we'll just go for that. Take out a little bit of mana. Take off some gems that we don't really need off the board. Go for another Creeping Death. Go for another Charm. And actually, that Charm should be match. Uh, one thing to note is that uh, similar to how Ship Cannon had that error, which I believe it still has, um, this troop does pick its target beforehand and not after. Um, it doesn't take them retroactively as in like one and then it checks for the next one. For example, it could, if you use this right now, it could do both Charms on the exact same troop which would then have one of the Inferno Kings just attack the other Inferno King twice. It doesn't check every single time. If it checked every single time, it would do one of them and hit, and then it would check the other and just do nothing. Um, but we'll see what it does here. Yeah, there we go. No valid target. Okay, so all we need now is a skull. Also, it's possible to get a double no valid target. That's something that you normally don't see that often, but uh, you can get it just from, like, if we use him right now, uh, we will get a double... Um, no valid target because uh, there has to be, of course, something adjacent to him for it to actually uh, work. Okay, well, there we go. But yeah, uh, that's not quite a... I actually explained that slightly weird when I was just doing that, but with the charm, um, what I was basically saying with it is even if the enemies adjacent to it are dead, it could still charm it, uh, which is a little bit weird because it takes it before the cast and not after. But anyways... And that will do it for this video. If you guys have any other questions, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. I will be doing a whole video for the Succubus, most likely, as I still haven't gotten around to the event video. But uh, that is most of the things that are within the objectives. A little bit of a harder objectives this week, um, as summoning random daemons is not really something that uh, most teams can really support that well. Uh, at least the troops that you can use to do it are fairly cheap. You can do it with as, something as cheap as a Void Portal or a Fully Traded Warlock, which both of which are relatively easy to get. Uh, Sorcerer Class 250 wins are also pretty easy. You can just get that from uh, completing out the uh, Karakaroth Kingdom, then going to your hero, going to uh, Sorcerer, and then setting your uh, class as Sorcerer. Also, again, make sure to use Sorcerer this week. 
uh, particularly with Creeping Death, if you happen to have it, or really any purple weapon that can hit all enemies, uh, switch it over to the perk of Possession. You have to manually switch it, and then you'll count as a Daemon, which will give you 25% all stats on your hero this week. But anyways, that'll wrap it up for this video. Thank you all so much for watching, and have a wonderful day.